Now, I'm in front of the city and county building, and um, somebody's screaming at somebody. I mean, and, and one thing I, I can't emphasize enough, and sadly covering enough of these types of stories, is it, it can truly take one person's action to fire up the crowd. And there was a guy in a Nuggets jersey who started screaming something and just wa- started walking down, uh, down Bannock. Uh, right now... And uh, you're just going to have to tell me, Randy, if we're live on, on 710knus.com. But, uh, you know, there's easily, I would say, a 1,000 people in front on the steps of the city and county building. And uh, a lot of people are, you know, they just called for, you know, whatever we do when we break this up, you know, be peaceful, no violence. Uh, we'll see if um, if actually that, that remains the case, um, I think. We saw a lot of the we saw a lot of the violent activity last night certainly happen after sundown, and you know by my estimate that's within the next hour. Yeah, we're uh, we're watching the stream now at 710knus.com. Encourage everybody to go check it out. Uh, you can get Stephen Tubbs' vantage point. You're broadcasting from your phone down there. Do you have a camera, or what's going on? Yeah, this is just the uh, you know just uh, just an iPhone. Very cool. And, uh, you know, I thank Mark Crowley for the technology. But I think it's important in something like this where I don't know where this will go down in the annals of Denver history. I hope it doesn't besides uh, besides the memory of last night. But, you know, you just never know. And like I said, you've got um, you've got the potential here when when one or two people do one thing and then two becomes 20 and 20 becomes 200. And I'm not saying any of that's going to happen. Um, but I have seen it before in, in my career. For those of you watching online at 710knus.com, I'm going to turn around and give you a little better vantage point of, of the Capitol. And most of the people are, you know, basically right here. You can see the, the Capitol right there. And, um, you know, the side. Um, we've got some people running over here and, that's from the general direction where the guy in the Nuggets jersey was. And I do have to say that uh, being live on both video and audio, that if we have any uh, sort of expletives or anything like that, it's certainly not our intent to break FCC rules or or anything like that. But there's hey. definitely something going on here. I hear 710 has a good lawyer that works there, so we'll, we'll, we'll make sure what? everybody's okay. I hear that as well, and <laughs> I, I'm not sure. There's something, in, and for those of you watching online, you know, there's something going on here at, at 14th and Bannock, and we'll get a little bit closer, but I can tell you there's a lot of people now yelling, and again, this started um, by one guy that I saw yelling. I'm not sure. I do see police officers now in, in their... Uh, Tactical gear. For those watching online, I just want to make sure that I I don't want to be stupid here. Um, so for the first time, I'm actually seeing uh, a Denver police officer uh, with one of those uh, either rubber uh, pepper ball kind of weapon. Um, you know, and I'd say, I don't know what's going on. And again, I mean, it's just, it, it's tense here. The officers are calm. There, there are people certainly making their opinions known. But for those of you watching, online you can see here there's a group of officers here and i don't see anyone randy that's maybe been taken into custody that would have that would have angered some people and i'll just pan around for those of you watching online this is uh you know basically bannock here and Colfax will, will curve around. The McNichols event uh, facility is right there. 
the – this is Dan, looking down Bannock between Colfax and, and 14. And, you know, a lot of people right now, Randy, um, holding signs, black lives over blue – Black lives over thin blue lines is one sign that I read. Uh, many of them, my friend, you know how this works. I will be unable to read and still maybe keep my job on Monday. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, what bothers me is, you know, no justice, no peace. It's a, they're frauds. They're, they're not down there because, I mean, the, the cop has been charged now with, what, third-degree murder and homicide they were all all four of them were immediately fired for sitting around and letting that happen it's it's outrageous there'll be massive civil lawsuits the family will will you know will at least be able to take care of themselves financially for a long long time these people are not down here for justice or peace or anything else they're down here for right. anarchy right randy and let me uh, i'm assuming you can still hear me okay yep. and um, I, I, what I've got to ask just of you live a little bit of on-air planning is I'm going to be unable to, for reasons of what I feel would be, uh, quite honestly, my own personal safety, is to not have that kind of conversation from my end down here. And I think you can probably, uh, you can probably uh, understand why. And that's the last thing that I want to do is, is get in front of something where uh, I become part of something that I don't want to. I'm simply going to report. We can go to break. Are you watching online? This is a, basically uh, 14th and Bannock, right across from the Webb Municipal Building. Uh, you do see a lot of uh, police officers here. I'm going to go around just a little bit. Um, there's definitely a lot of verbal verbal talk going on. Yeah. Um, yeah, we can uh, sure against these police can, officers. We can sure hear it. And why don't we take our pause here? And you can maybe find out a little more about what it specifically is going on, and we'll uh, we'll get right back to you on the other side of this break. Sounds good, Randy. All righty. We're back on the Stefan Tub Show special extended coverage of the protest in downtown Denver. Stefan's on the ground. Looks like something's happening, so let's get to Stefan right now. What's happening, Steph? All right. Uh, Randy? Uh, yeah. you gotta let me know if you can hear me. Yeah, T tear gas. <laughs> and, um, I'm sorry. They just um, opened fire with the pepper pellet. Oh man. Um, <clears throat> I I apologize. I mean, if you've never had it, uh, there's no fake in it. Um, Uh, I will say, and I apologize, I mean, it's very hard to breathe. Um, yeah, and if you, need, gotta a, be careful. Need, if you need a pause, I'm let fine. me know. Okay. Um, no, and, and, and I'm telling you right now. What triggered it? I know, our, our, listen, our program director, Kelly Michaels, is, is listening. We should blow out the brakes. No one is answering my phone calls, and I'm not trying to be dramatic, but this is whatever's going to happen, it's going to happen now. And okay. five minute commercial break does our viewers and our listeners a disservice. Let's keep that off the air. I'm trying to be as respectful as I can. This started, why? Because bottles of water, other pieces of material were thrown at police officers as they left. Well, we had a different vantage point. We were, for those of you watching online, we were over here. <laughs> Uh, we were over here, and they pulled away going this way. If you're watching, going <coughs> going eastbound on Colfax. And the crowd that I had been standing with started throwing and pelting with all kinds of items and screaming. And that's what triggered it. And... I'm going to tell you because I'm going to be fair, and I'm going to tell you what I saw during our commercial break as the Denver police vehicle with the uh, the one Randy with the with the railing uh, on the sides where the officers can stand and hold a, a metal bar. Um, as they drove away, they opened fire with those pellet balls, and um, it was not a good look. 
It was not a good look for the Denver Police Department. Uh, I understand completely, for God's sake, that they were taking uh, water bottles being thrown at them and perhaps other items that I, I just don't know. But um, to drive away while firing, uh, to me, uh, it was just a little strange to see, I've got to tell you. We're back, those of you online with us. This is the city and county building, and it looks, I mean, what a difference a half a block makes. you got the pepper bullets over there, and here you've got what appears to be a candlelight vigil. And I'm going to see if I can zoom in on this for those of you watching online. I'm not sure if I can, but um, I would say there's at least several hundred people now holding their candles into the air, one sign at the top of the stairs reads, enough is enough. Uh, one sign here in front of me, you can't separate peace from freedom. And, you know, the question is now, and this is no disrespect to anybody here because this has been a peaceful group. This is not the same. We have people of color to take steps back to the Capitol and let our allies step up for this one. So we know who's, uh, who's peaceful and who's an agitator. I couldn't quite make that out. What, what did he say? Well, I'm glad. Uh, thanks for asking. Yeah. Because um, uh, he was one that led, and I'm not sure who that young man is, but he's been with the Bullhorn when I was down here earlier this afternoon. And uh, what he just told the crowd is to is basically, if you're on our side and you are not an agitator, uh, to, to, to come over here. And his quote was, what you heard maybe muffled was, uh, we will see who the agitators are. And I give them credit for that. Uh, I want to be as fair as possible, and I think it is unfair for anybody to say that everyone down here is uh, is causing the same amount of trouble or throwing things at cops. These people obviously have not. They were here. Um, I'll try to get in for our online audience a little bit closer so you can see this is... Uh, what they hope to be a, a can, candlelight vigil. Take a listen in. Then, of course, they stop chanting as soon as I, <laughs> yeah. I come up here. Classic uh, live radio. That's the live radio. But, um, you know, I can say this just from my vantage point of, as uh, for those of you online, you can see the Capitol over there, Center Center Park straight ahead. Um, it's, it's very evident to me, just from the live coverage that I saw last night on television, that this may be <clears throat> this may be a group, I hate estimates, but I'll give you one anyway, I, I would say maybe five times the size of last night. And I'm just trying to see, you know, here at the city and county building, for those of you watching online, and I'll describe it for radio, is uh, they did not choose... <coughs> Excuse me. They did not choose to uh, plywood these glass first floor windows like they did at the state capitol. Um, and I can't remember, Randy, if I finished my thought. But you know, the question is now: these people have been here. Um, they've uh, earlier today held a moment of silence. Um, where do they go now? Um, now that this event is over, do they disperse and go home? Do they go out to eat or or something more nefarious? And, and you know, at this point, uh, that's, that's an unknown. But I can tell you this much. Uh, if you would have told me when I said goodbye to you and gave you the socially appropriate elbow bump, and you said that um, by 740, well before sundown, that I would watch a... Denver police vehicle drive away firing pepper bullets uh, into the crowd, I would have said probably not. That'll happen after sundown. Uh, again, I am not justifying what these uh, thugs, i got to be careful, but what, they, that what they've done when they were throwing things at, uh, at the police. Um, it was just, I guess I just reiterate what I said earlier, and that is it was just a very weird, bizarre look as they're literally speeding away from the corner at uh, 14th and Bannock to uh, just seemingly 
randomly uh, start opening fire. I'm going to try to see if I can get to, for both of our our audience online and radio, to see if I can get more of what he's saying here. downtown Denver on 710 KNUS and simulcast on 710KNUS.com. Are, are police moving through? Is that why they're shouting, don't shoot? You know, that's a good question, Randy. I'm going to move around to the front of this. I don't think so. Okay. Um, I haven't seen a Denver police officer since uh, whatever that would be 20 minutes ago. Um, there are a couple of cars here. They seem to be, uh, when, when I arrived here, for those of you watching online, I arrived here and there were people hanging off of these cars. And as you can see, and as I can describe for you on radio, it is a healthy sized crowd. Um, you know, hundreds of people here right now. Um, there's still a, a sense of the pepper balls that were fired. I don't know, Randy, you have to help me uh, 15, 20 minutes ago. Uh, there's still a little bit of that in the air. I can feel it in my eyes. Um, and certainly didn't mean to have a, a coughing fit and coughing along on live radio or on the Internet. But uh, I'll tell you what, they worked. They, they did disperse that crowd. And uh, I'm not sure where those officers went. Um, I have a feeling, and this is just a, a, a gut feeling, that this crowd will eventually uh, move across Civic Center Park and and my guess would be that they would maybe either congregate in Civic Center Park or go up to the Capitol. Uh, earlier today, I saw state patrol that was out there. Some of, one officer was on the balcony, uh, just kind of keeping keeping eye on it. Um, I just heard a huge, huge explosion uh, in this direction. Uh, it would be toward the Capitol. And when I say explosion, I just want to make sure that it was. But I, I detail it properly that it, it seems to be at least uh, one of those concussion type grenades, which would lead me to believe they're not going to set those off unless they uh, unless they want to disperse a crowd. Uh, I'm going to turn the camera around. You can see uh, what I'm wearing right now. And it is a pink mask. There's another uh, loud flashbang that appears to be coming from Lincoln or Broadway. And so I'm walking toward the Capitol through Civic Center Park and very, very calm here. Grass is beautiful. Uh, nobody's running or anything like that. I will say there were a couple of people at first with the first. Got to remember, Randy, that I'm also on camera <laughs> I'm used to just being on radio. So for those of you online, I'm sorry for the crappy uh, camera work. Uh, let me switch this around, see if you can see this. I apologize for the poor video. You can see a couple of Denver police cars. Here goes the one right now. Uh, and that is the second vehicle with officers uh, on that vehicle with the, with the uh, foot rails and the handrails. Again, live breaking news coverage here on 710KNUS and KNUS.com. Hey, Steph, we're wondering about uh, the top of the hour news. Uh, break out or you think we should stick around? Uh, Randy, I think, you know, maybe now it's probably going to take me three minutes or so to get through. So if you want to take a break now, uh, we'll stay connected, of course. And, uh, again, within the last three minutes, two really large. Yeah, let him wrap up. But we've got we'll, we'll be out at the top of the hour. There'll be, there'll be bumper music to get you out. Maybe happening near Broadway and Colfax. And so uh, yeah, we'll rejoin you in the 8 o'clock hour. And, uh and we'll get a little bit closer. Okay, and uh, we had a recommendation from a texter. Uh, There's one... another big, oh, another I heard big it. concussion heard grenade. 
I can see now the tear gas is coming up from the intersection. Oh, man. Uh, a lot of people are, there's a lot of, I, I just can't believe how much traffic. Give me a legal ID. Uh, I mean, can I just say, if anybody within the sound of my voice, if you just are thinking about driving down here, I mean, use, use some common sense. Um, but there's a, Randy, there's a ton of traffic. There's more pops and explosions just now. Uh, we'll get a little bit closer, and you'll just have to tell me the guidance. But I can see from what would appear to be Lincoln and Colfax, uh, right there near that RTD new uh, facility, that there's a huge cloud. We're going to go behind the banister here for those of you watching online. Um, huge cloud of, cloud of tear gas. Well, and, you, ought, uh, you ought to be ready for it now, buddy. <laughs> Man. Yeah, I tell you what, uh, if, if only the first dose could uh, get you yeah, immunity. the most. There, yeah, there's a lot of, of uh, what appears to be tear gas coming from the north west corner of Lincoln and Colfax. And what's just so bizarre is I think for those of you online, you can see the amount of traffic here. And I, I, I mean, I'll venture to guess. I mean, look at this, look at this backup. For those of you online. You think it's just uh, looky loose? Uh, you people just coming I mean, down to see what... There's another big, big yeah. flash grenade. Um, that is by my count three or four. And... Uh, one minute. That would indicate to me that in the same vicinity, uh, people are simply not dispersing the way Denver police want them to. Um, I also see, for the first time down here, I see uh, two, two what appears to be ambulances or EMS. Hmm. Um, yeah, it, just, it's I'm, like people I'm, are down I'm, for a Friday night party. Well, listen, we're heading up to the top of the hour, Stefan. We're going to keep the video oh, running online during the news break and we'll pick up the uh, second hour of this special live coverage of downtown's protests tonight with Stephen Tubbs on the ground Randy Corcoran in studio right here on 710 KNUS Denver Stephen uh, what's going on Randy just uh, just about a minute ago the closest and loudest flash grenade or flashbang uh, was at the intersection of uh, Lincoln and Colfax, it is uh, it's, it's just as predicted, to be quite honest with you, uh, how this wasn't going to happen tonight. What I am surprised at is uh, during our break, uh, we had to take cover behind, I say we, I'm, I'm not here with anybody else, and uh, we had to take cover behind this tree that you can see online. Uh, the police on the other side had open fire again on this crowd here at the corner uh, with their pepper balls that I know all too well from last hour that definitely uh, definitely worked. Um, I got to tell you, it's been a hot minute since uh, I was close to a flashbang being thrown, and it was right at this intersection here. And there are most certainly certain individuals that are taunting the police across the street. I'm going to see if I can get a little closer. I will tell you that uh, it's a little bit, and the cars, the cars and the traffic down Colfax are just absolutely stunning to me. Um, quite honestly, I'm very, very surprised that these streets weren't closed, and I have no idea why. Um, it is bizarre, Stefan. They they put they send uh, workers, city workers, and uh, capital workers, other folks home early. Are the are the cars that are driving by mostly in support or quietly just getting through, or can you tell? Um, I, I think right now it's mostly people that are part of this Hon um, honking and rattling. I, I can tell you right, yeah, and I can tell you right now, uh, not that they're listening, but um, this is a mistake. The one mistake that I can identify so far by Denver police is why in the world would you have pullbacks open? It, it, it is a big mistake, I think, for for the allowance of traffic through here right now. And I'm not saying the cars are doing anything, but, you know, you never know. In a situation like this, you never know what could be thrown from a vehicle. Um, 
if you can see online across the street here is a staging area for all the police officers and they're what i i would say definitely at least uh, partial tactical gear um there are a couple of ambulances there paramedics but you see across the street here there are people sitting down uh some people have been have been dancing in front of the police uh they apparently sold out of when i say sold out i think they gave them out for free but they had plastic almost uh what we've seen with coronavirus the face shields that that a surgeon would wear or doctors would wear uh or healthcare providers um they had a whole bunch of them and they apparently ran out they gave it to a lot of people so there are people down here with definitely more protection for them than they had from what i saw from uh from last night um for those of you watching online and i'll describe it as i look to the north across colfax is this is the it, this was the launching point on the north side of uh, or yeah north side of of colfax that <laughs> there's another pepper ball uh. <laughs> That's a tough one. I, I, it makes no sense to have these streets open. And, uh, you know, we saw that, that woman who somebody jumped on her hood and, and then uh, appeared to turn her car and drive it toward the protester who jumped on her car. They're just asking for more of that. Um, the this streets is a mistake. Open. I'm telling you right now, it is a mistake in crowd control. Um, it, it, I, I mean, I am not a law enforcement official, but... Uh, why would you want to take the, you know, I guess, extra risk of, of having cars come by here? Yeah, what, what if some tourist, you know, just in there with their families driving down Colfax trying to get to their hotel in Aurora or something has no idea what they're driving into right now? Right. Uh, I, I just don't and, understand. And I will say this, Randy. Yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I, I think for those of you watching online, what I have not liked is, from across the street, and obviously I'm on the capital side, so the the uh, south side. Um, the pepper balls will be fired. And what I would say, I mean, I'm not saying I'm not saying that they don't have a, a reason, perhaps, but some of them have taken position, leaning up against their patrol cars, and then started. Um, what I say, at least. One, one incident seemed to be kind of an indiscriminate just shooting at a crowd, certainly to, to reduce the crowd coming over to that side. But um, there were just some rocks thrown right over my left shoulder, Randy. Oh, man. Are you uh, – uh, And there are – Have you seen any there, other – have there been any fights or any other – any protesters to the protesters? Uh, anybody taking them on? Uh, not that I've seen. Okay. Uh, on the corner of, of Lincoln and Colfax, um, somebody has a megaphone right now, and I just want to uh, live on the air and on the Internet thank the gentleman who just came up to me and put his hand on my shoulder and said, just watch your back. Somebody's about to throw a rock behind you. And I thought that was very, very classy. I have no clue why he would do that, but uh, thank you to that unidentified person. Uh, and, and, Randy, the reason why, it doesn't matter if you're watching online with us or, or on the radio, is they can tell the general direction where a rock comes from, and that seems to be, and, and, and I, I would say absolutely justifiably so, uh, to perhaps try to clear this area after a rock has been thrown and you would fire those those pepper balls it's been about probably 15 20 minutes since this intersection here at uh, lincoln and colfax has had any sort of flash grenade thrown with a big bang but uh i'm going to tell you one thing if i uh, were a betting man i would say that is coming almost certainly sometime soon as there are hundreds of people standing on the west and eastbound corners of this intersection.
Yeah, it, it really feels like people are waiting for dark. That things are going to get nasty when it gets dark. And uh, we've got right now, right now, we've got um, we've got a lot of firing here. We got a lot of firing, a lot of firing of pepper balls. You can watch live at 710knus.com, 710knus.com. Uh, we've got, like I see, at least five or six officers right now taking shelter behind this vehicle. I wish I could zoom in. I don't think I can. They are opening fire right now and at rapid fire to the crowd. I don't know what sparked this. Meantime, you got a guy with no shirt and a cowboy hat on just wandering around Colfax. I cannot believe that this street is open. It is inexcusable. There goes a water bottle that, that comes right in front of that cruiser. And they're still taking, they're still in, in their defensive position, uh, firing these pepper ball uh, rounds that I was, I was told that they do not feel good when they hit. And I can tell you one thing, they do not feel good when you breathe them. Um, and, and Randy, again, I'm not trying to be melodramatic at all about what I'm seeing, but there are pepper balls going around. You can see the explosions on the asphalt of, of the little gas that goes up. And to see, to see cars continuing to go by here is just absolutely, it, it's unbelievable to me. And, 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 Randy, you know this as well as anybody. As long and straight as Colfax is, they could close it. So for those of you watching online, the Webb building, the old Denver Post building right there, they could close Colfax in a matter of probably less than five minutes. And I, I'm just stunned. I really am stunned at what I'm seeing. And, I, you know, I just don't understand the, the strategy to stay in the back and just be firing shots off. If they want to disperse the crowd... Why don't they bring numbers down there and just move them out? I, it, I'm not um, a cop. I think, no, and listen, I think that is, uh, is an extremely valid point. These officers have not moved, but they are taking these positions behind this vehicle, and I'm, I'm getting as close as I can. Uh, I'm telling you what, I can't believe I'm going to say this, Randy. I sure as hell am glad that there are tents that are put up along Colfax right now because these will these will provide you know at least I can duck under this one to the right or the left if you're watching online but I, I don't know if if this is just a reaction to the environment and I never want to take anything away from our our men and women in blue uh, they're up against extreme pressure but to see what I've seen to your point there is nothing more than hiding behind this vehicle and opening fire for perhaps very justified reasons. I've seen rocks and bottles thrown, but there's no attempt at crowd control when it comes to, I mean, there is zero attempt right now to get this crowd to leave, none. And it seems like, you know, with darkness coming, now would be the time to do it. I agree with you. And right now, more officers across the street are taking their defensive positions behind this white vehicle Online, you can see this door open. Yep. Uh, the officers with their helmets on, their face shield. And I will say, if you can watch, if you're watching online, you can see that this crowd is coming ever closer. In fact, now there's a movement. And there's there are, a movement now to walk across the street. Yeah, and they're walking right out in front of cars. Uh, that, car, that's what I, I Randy, I mean, I, I mean, note to self to, uh, yeah. to let all Tays and the chief of police know that whatever commander is in charge of this scene, this was the stupidest decision they could have made. And, and I, I, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but uh, I would say right here, for those of you watching online and for those of you listening on the radio, we thank you for our live coverage and for joining us as we're here on night two. The reaction to George Floyd's death on, on Memorial Day Monday. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, we've got we've got tear gas that's been fired. We've got they're lobbing them back. Tear gas has been thrown, and some people right there. There's another canister that went off. If you're watching online, it just hit this tent. There is a lot of tear gas being. This is just a matter of time. And now this goes thrown back at Denver police. There's a big a big flash grenade. 
this this is to be expected. There were too many people on that side, and this is the most tear gas that I've certainly seen deployed since I've been down here. The pepper balls, what I don't like, the, the pepper balls are still being shot through the cloud. Now they've stopped through the cloud of tear gas. Um, many people, here comes another. These tear gas canisters are, are just flying everywhere. This guy just got hit with one. The guy right there, for those of you online, he, this guy's picking one up and he's throwing it back at cops. They all, of course, the, the police officers have their their tear gas masks on. Uh, I, I just, friends, I, I just can't believe this is downtown Denver in 2020. And you cannot do this halfway, you know, if they're going to come in force. Uh, they're firing at us, Randy, right now. They're firing. Uh. <laughs> and Steph and I, we've got calls we can take. I'm staying quiet because the, the sound is fascinating and and terrifying to listen to. Uh, if you need a, need a pause, we can bring a caller on and and uh, give you a chance to get to some place with some air. Yeah, the good thing is, Randy, right now, and I will say this, uh, the wind is blowing away away from this crowd. I want to show you this statue of a Medal of Honor recipient, Joe P. Martinez. For those of you watching online, I know the quality is not that great because of the conditions of light. This breaks my heart to see a statue honoring, I believe, Colorado's first horrible Medal of Honor recipient. And you can see this uh, red, for those of you online, this red graffiti, the numbers, was just spray painted on there just uh, within the last 30 seconds or a minute. Uh, Joe Martinez gave his life so that these people can be out here. And it makes me, quite honestly, uh, just sick to my stomach for anyone that's worn the uniform to defend this country. This is a Medal of Honor recipient and a statue in Civic Center Park, and it has been been defaced you know i feel i feel like forgive them they know not what they do but i do not understand why the police the national guard why they're not in full force down there and start acting like a police force if you if people are going to act like this then you you shut it down you don't let this go and go and go and this is going to get worse it's not even dark it's starting to get dark no. no randy i mean we're just at sunset right now uh, my friend, I uh, I have to say, Governor Jared Polis, the mayor of Denver, Chief Paul Pazin, who I have the utmost respect for, um, this, and maybe, Randy, it's all part of the plan. I don't know. I am not in law enforcement. Uh, somebody here in front, if you're watching online, is being treated for presumably getting nailed by tear gas or maybe a, one of those pepper balls. But, uh, Randy, if you were to ask me this morning if we had talked and you said, do you think what I've seen and what we've seen over the last hour was going to happen, I would have said 100% guarantee. And that, I guess, is for our listeners and viewers, um, is really questionable as to the response, I know the police are in a damned if they do, damned if they don't situation. But what I've seen here, and we've got more pepper balls being shot. You can see the way the crowd is running away. For those of you online with us, um, Randy, this was this was all but a guarantee that this was going to happen. And the crowd is so much larger than last night. Just from what I observed on television. This is going on now on the west steps of the Capitol. And it is almost, and there's more tear gas right here being deployed. So I was going to say this is almost like 
stay away from that intersection of of Lincoln and Colfax, and you'll be okay. But here's tear gas being being deployed right here, and you can see people coughing. Uh, it is no joke. But, this stuff works. But you know what? If you shoot at it here and there and a little bit now and a little bit later, you, you just agitate the crowd. You don't disperse the crowd. You gotta... there, there is no – yeah, Randy, uh, to, exactly to your point. There is absolutely zero effort to clear this crowd right now, zero. They'll, they'll move them from a corner perhaps, or if they get too close and cross that – I mean, the – you know, the uh, – the DMZ line is, is full fast. Uh, I mean, and the fact that they have Lincoln open in front of the Capitol is just unbelievable. This right here, what you see online, this is the rubber, so to speak, burning from these vehicles. A few motorcycles out here as well. But uh, there comes a lot of people running back here from where I was behind the tent when I had to make a a dash for at least some sort of cover. Um, but, I mean, Randy, you can hear, even on radio, you can hear the sounds of, of the motorcycles and the cars. There is movement now from Denver police officers who were across the street on the north side of, of Colfax, and they're now moving, and I don't know, you know, where they're being deployed, if they're going somewhere else they're quite obviously not leaving the area um what do you, what do you, be online now what do, what do you think ahead, yeah what do you think about this text what happens is it becomes a you against me situations both sides feel they're acting in self-defense pretty soon whatever happened to start the riot will be irrelevant and forgotten it might sound weird but if all the police and swat and everything just packed up and drove away and let the so-called protesters just stand there by themselves, they'd get bored and go home. Uh, no offense to uh, the text, but they have zero idea what they're talking about. Yeah, these... You want a downtown Denver? You want a downtown Denver tomorrow morning? Yeah. You keep the police here. Yeah. Uh, what I am surprised at, Randy, <laughs> is, um, damn it, they had time. They had time. They had a full, a full night, overnight, <coughs> and a full day to at least close Colfax down. And there may be, and I know I'm bitching about that and complaining about it, but and there may be a very logical reason why. But my friend, uh, can you think of one? No, no, absolutely not. There's no reason to have innocent folks, tourists, anybody who might just be passing through has no peace in this, no interest in it, to put them in harm's way or get one, even one of these protesters hit. Some of these folks are just driving by, and protesters, we can see them from the video that Stefan Tubbs is streaming live down there. They're just running right out in between cars and across the street, throwing tear gas back over at the police. I mean, this is dangerous for folks to have open streets is insane. Well, it, it is, Randy. I agree with you wholeheartedly, and... You know, you're on the air. <coughs> you're on the air tomorrow, and I know you'll continue this. So why, why are we seeing this right now? It does nothing what? to add to the uh, to the situation. Uh, plenty. You can't see it online, but plenty of I would say a group of maybe 15 to 20. Some now with the full. Uh, the body shield, uh, kind of the plastic piece that would cover them in case they were taking any kind of uh, things being thrown at them. I want to see, for those of you watching online, I want to see if I can just go in real quick. And trust me, it'll be quick. So that right there, that little innocuous thing in the asphalt is where one of the pepper balls had exploded. And opinion. they do explode. They're very, uh, from what I understand, very uh, thin membrane. They will break upon hitting you. And uh, I just realized I'm standing in the lane of Colfax. That's probably not smart. Uh, but just that little innocuous thing I showed you online, um, that then bursts into, I'm telling you, it is enough to uh, make you go to your knees if you get enough of it. Um, Let's reset a minute real 
Real quick, Stefan. Randy Corcoran in studio. Stefan Tubbs downtown live in the midst of the protest. And you and I have been kind of speculating about what's happening, what the police are doing and not doing. We've got an expert in here with us kind of running the show here. Mark Crowley's got a microphone now. Mark, what are you seeing? What do you think about how the police are responding right now? 30 plus years a police officer. It is a, a, a little odd that they didn't shut down the streets today. It's like Stefan had mentioned, they, they had what happened last night. Uh, I'm, I'm very surprised that they didn't uh, barricade the whole area. You go back to some of the old Columbus Day parades, and they spent three or four days moving trash cans, so we've got a lot of, newspapers. We've got a lot more, uh, got a lot more uh, pepper ball fire right now, and it came as a result of someone throwing a huge water bottle across and it landed at the feet <laughs> of, of Denver police. Uh, they they right now, for those of you watching online, full open fire just moments ago. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm sorry, this doesn't seem like law enforcement. It just seems like tit for tat. It, it, um, my friend, I, 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 I could not have said that better being down here. Uh, we take a water bottle, you take pepper balls. Um, they're opening fire right now again. And look, for those of you online, look at the traffic. Look at the traffic on Colfax. Those cops right on the other side are firing pepper balls. I, it, it, it boggles the mind. Mark Crowley, is there any possible explanation you can think of for why these streets are wide open right now? No, uh I just don't understand it. I just wonder if they've just taken such a hands-off approach that it's going to backfire. See, th this just strikes me, and, and, you know, I know we're doing news right now, but this is Democrat leadership. This is Democrat control. They don't want to stop it too fast. They don't want to show people that they can be controlled and shut down when they begin to break the law because that doesn't fit the agenda. And Stefan, you don't have to comment on that. You're in the middle of it right now. But this is this is dangerous. This is insane. Randy, it, it absolutely is dangerous. And I'm telling you, what 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 I've seen so far here tonight is absolutely. You can see online they they block traffic temporarily on Lincoln, going north, and it looks like some of them have now moved out so this traffic can get through. Again, my God, why are these cars? Why are these cars here? Uh, you can see the crowd on the west lawn of the the state capitol. Um, they had time, and to Mark's point, and Mark knows knows much better than most of our listeners, and, and certainly you and me, that um, maybe there's a reason, a hands-off approach. But you you said something earlier, Randy, that I think really summarizes in a very succinct way. The last uh, hour plus that I have seen a lot of pepper balls being fired and, and, and everything going on down here, and that is, all right, you're going to throw a rock? I'm going to shoot 10 pepper balls in your, in your general vicinity. You throw a water bottle, uh, we're going to open fire with a couple more of those things. And for those of you online looking at the uh, south side of Colfax and Lincoln, a whole bunch of cannabis, and it's just a matter of time. You get a large enough crowd, you see a cannabis thrown into the car. Um, we've seen, and some of you online have seen, that it has uh, not necessarily bad. That's no better way to put it. You know, people having these cannabis, and I'm right back at the cop. And now their car is pulled over and stopped and talking to people and it, it's like a parade I, mean, yeah, and I know you're watching online randy i just for those of you watching online cars as far as i can see south on lincoln as far as i can see and the police just allowed this to happen. they welcomed this by not shutting down the streets if they had the streets yeah. cut they wouldn't have to worry about all these other people in this traffic. They could start mobilizing and just move these people out. There's no reason to allow a so-called protest to continue to occur as soon as laws begin to be violated. That's all the reason you need to shut it down. 
my friend, I I don't know what to say. I mean, you know, there's another big flash grenade right there, right at the corner. Uh, needless to say, and, and Mr. Crowley certainly knows that when those things go off, that's not something that would be thrown. I'm going to go away from these these car horns. You know, when those big flash bang grenades to clear a crowd, uh, when they're thrown, they they explode almost instantaneously. There's not a long fuse, per se, where somebody could pick it up and then throw it back at police officers. There's another large bang. Um, and, and, my God, uh, Colfax is as busy as it was, uh, you know, at 11 o'clock this morning. And it is just... This is going to be long remembered, and we'll talk about it on my show on Monday, but uh, this is an absolute failure of crowd control when it comes to vehicular traffic. I just do not understand. It's a dereliction of duty, and somebody's going to get hurt because of it, or they sure are in a, a dangerous situation where they could. You know, it's weird watching the video, Stefan, because it's dark here at 710 KNUS. And yet, down by you, there's still some sunlight, it looks like. Yeah, there's still, I mean, you could read a book right now in this light uh, here in downtown. Um, huh. Now, you have, you have on that side, again, this is the, the demarcation right here is Colfax. Um, the world-famous cash register building right there. The old Denver Post building off to the left. You've got this RCD facility. You've got what appears to be more tear gas on the other side. And just, you know, come on down. Bring your car. Drive down Colfax. Drive down Lincoln. Drive down Broadway. Uh, we're not going to do anything. And, and it's not its not only the innocent people that could get hurt. It just opens it up for more protesters to come down and add to the mob. Get them up. Get them more excited. I, this is, I, I've never seen worse police work than this right now. From um, th This is a game of cat and mouse, yeah. too. And, and, you know, I mean, it, it's just, you know, it, it, what it is, there's another big grenade right there in the intersection. With people driving by. Um, Randy, that, that went off in front of at least two vehicles with two motorcycles that you can see right here online, uh, right there. I, I mean, there... And first of all, by now, uh, and here comes a wave of, of pepper spray. <laughs> um, by now, if you're in this area, you know damn well what's going on. So I'm not going to say, you know, no, no more talk about there's no disrespect to you because you could have been right an hour ago. There are no tourists down here. There may be a lot of looky-loos, but... These are people that are coming down. I'll tell you what, um, I would never be caught down here if it weren't for the job and the crazy DNA I have about just wanting to be the eyes and ears for people. But <laughs> it's a matter of time before somebody either gets hit by a car, uh, one of these things goes off uh, as somebody's driving 25 miles an hour and, you know, temporarily blurs their vision and a car goes into a crowd. I mean, these are these are things that I'm judging with my own eyes <coughs> that are absolutely possible down here. You've got a much larger police presence now across the street than just uh, 15, 20 minutes ago. But what in the and heck? This has been. What are they waiting for? <laughs> what what in the world have they waited this long for? Well, are... Randy, uh, at some point, uh, you know as well as I do, what you see online across the street from Colfax is going to come right here. Yep. And it's going to come right here to the Capitol. Are there uh, pe these people do not seem like they're, you know, going to leave anytime soon. Are there uh, are there kids down there? It looked like there were some little kid chairs by these tent <laughs> tents that are set up uh, or for the most part no children are drawn into this. No, I haven't seen I've seen uh, probably the youngest I've seen would be a couple of uh, mid to late teens. Um, I've seen people with their dogs down here, which I just absolutely think is sick as a dog owner and a dog lover. Oh, yeah. Um, but you know what? When you want to talk about 
the behavior of people. You're seeing it here tonight in Denver, Colorado, where, for the most part, I'm still going to say, because it needs to be said, that for the most part, sure, people are fired up, but for the most part, people aren't doing anything but being vocal. Some are being vocal and rude. Some have vulgar signs, but they're not the ones that are the majority of this group. But despite the pleas at the steps of the city and county building about 90 minutes ago, please, uh, you know, stay peaceful, no violence. Uh, as you well know, my friend, they are, uh, this world is full of people, and Colorado is sadly full of people that have no problem in throwing a rock at a cop, calling a cop a pig, throwing a bottle of water uh, or anything else at uh, at law enforcement. <clears throat> I think it's just going to be a matter of time. I mean, what I don't understand is the more time goes by, people aren't going to get, I don't think people are wanting to get, they're not going to get bored and just leave. That's the one thing I don't understand. And I, I got to tell you, with the amount of traffic right here in front of me on Lincoln, if they get bored, maybe they get in their car and then they continue to drive around. I mean, it's kind of like this cyclical thing. For the uh, Antifa crowd down there, this is what they call being active. Denver is active right now. That's the Twitter messages that are going out, meaning get down here, show up, make noise, get it, get it revved up. And why the police are letting it get dark letting all these cars go through and not simply dispersing this crowd uh, i will i will wait and with great interest for some kind of an explanation on that and if they try and tell us well it's their right to protest that right ends as soon as they start breaking the law and this is what happens in uh, democrat run cities it's just the way it is a little over two hours into our live coverage with Stefan Tubbs on the ground at Civic Center Park, downtown Denver, as the night's round of protests continues. And our video stream is back at 710knus.com. Go check it out, 710knus.com. You can listen there as well. And Stefan Tubbs joins us now. What's happening while you were gone there, buddy? A lot more tear gas, Randy, and just please confirm with me that you can hear me. We can hear you, yep. Okay. Um, I, I just always want to be real, and um, it is disgusting to me to see people throwing anything at law enforcement. But uh, what I have seen over the last 20 to 30 minutes just really completely and utterly disappoints me with the actions of the Denver Police Department. And here, right here is a huge canister of tear gas right there. You can see it spinning. Here comes another one right there, and I'm running away right now. Yeah. What I am, what, you can see this right here. You can see the clouds. Uh, Denver Police, they have absolutely failed tonight, and I'll tell you why. There has not been one announcement, and I have never covered an uprising, a riot, Police activity like this with a civil unrest, I have never covered in 31 years of news. A situation like this where there is no police officers on a bullhorn saying, break up the crowd, disperse, we will be deploying tear gas. I have seen absolutely none of that. For those of you watching online, as we look back toward where the Capitol would be, and I realize it's dark, I saw officers I'm not saying indiscriminately, but I saw officers in dark uniforms, extremely hard to see, firing their pepper pellet guns from the dark. And that is inexcusable. I had texted a representative with the Colorado State House, and I said, there needs to be a state hearing on this. Whatever you do, whether it's the state, the city, and I love Paul Pazin. Uh, he is a personal friend. I have the utmost respect for men and women in blue. I cannot say that enough. But I have never covered any kind of unrest like this where there is not any warning. And it is not right. You may be watching or listening and saying what they are doing is not right. There's another tear gas canister right there for those of you watching online. 
got Chris an, picking it up now and throwing it away. Got an email from Maryland that just came in, Stefan. It just fits right in. The police could stop it if they wanted to or if they had the okay to do what it takes. It's almost like they're enjoying the tete-a-tete, but maybe they're just obeying orders. What a farce another, of law enforcement. Another, you can see this tear gas canister right now. I'm not getting into as if they enjoy it. I'm not going to get into those emails. Um, uh, here comes another tear gas canister right here, right here. And you can see that these are being tossed from the dark into this portion of Civic Center Park. It, there has been no announcement. Many people, I understand what you may think about that they don't deserve to be warned. But this is every, I have lived and covered Los Angeles riots. I have lived in New York City and covered as a newsman stories there. I've been a national correspondent. I have covered enough the Seattle World Trade Organization riots. I'm not trying to big time. What I'm trying to tell you is this is unheard of in my career that there is not some way, and now a police helicopter, I believe, is above shining a light here on Civic Center Park. But you, Randy, the standard protocol of what I have covered, and I've covered, never covered anything like this in Denver, is you give the crowd a warning to disperse. Oftentimes it's one, two, three warnings, and then they take action. Seeing officers fire from the dark in a park is, is I don't know what to say. Um, with no warning, I am not disagreeing with anyone who says that many of these people out here are criminals, committing criminal activity. And I, I just, I, I can't believe, I just can't believe. You're listening to Stefan Tubbs saying. live at Civic Center Park right now. Tear gas going off everywhere. You can watch it live at 710knus.com. Stefan, is it working? Are people dispersing? Absolutely. Like leaving the uh, area or just going to another place Randy, where Randy, they can breathe? No, no. You know what I just, I, let me tell you what I just overheard. What are they doing? They're pushing us down Broadway, and all there's going to be is looting along Broadway. I can't disagree with that. Simply I disagree with that. bizarre. And uh, I have got to, and I can stay with you. Um, as we're live in Civic Center Park, uh, for some of you online, you can see the King County building off to the distance. I'm just going to get away for a moment because the tear gas has been pretty, pretty thick of late, or the pepper spray, whatever it is. Um, if you were wondering, Randy, about the traffic situation, uh, zero change. Colfax running as normal. Uh, it's just, <laughs> I, 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 again, I. I cannot wait for the the post mortem on on how they responded tonight, and uh, I would tell the police chief that uh, I was very, very personally unimpressed with the response. I think what we saw on television last night may have been even a little bit more. Uh, and I have no idea. I wasn't down here last night to know if maybe they gave any verbal warnings. Uh, in all fairness, again, I want to try to be as fair as possible. I don't know if this is protocol. Denver police do not announce that the crowd must disperse. Uh, it has worked, but what it's doing is it's clearing out an area at a time. And then once that's done, people just move to another area. And uh, it's it seems like, Randy, that a lot of this just simply as we've been stating now for more than two hours, it seems that a lot of this could have been avoided. Do you have any idea from, because you have been covering stories for such a long time, did the instructions come from the elected officials or do the police chiefs have the ability to empower their, their, uh, you know, their shift sergeants or whoever's in charge of one of these things to make some of these decisions? Cause I, I have never seen it this bad. Randy, I think, uh, you know, great question. I think that's uh, probably a better question for for Mr. Crowley. I, I don't know. I, I certainly think, uh, because the mayor of Denver is the boss of Paul Pazin, the police chief, uh -huh. I, I I would certainly think that a directive could come down from the top. But um, 
You know, this is not the Denver Police Department that I know, um, to be quite honest. And have I seen, you know, any brutality or anything like that? Absolutely not. Um, I've seen indiscriminate firing into crowds where a crowd didn't do anything, but in order to try to get them to disperse, uh, they've shot. The one thing that will stick with me, my friend, for a long time is the firing of those rounds of pepper pellets or bullets from the dark into crowds that I, I've got to say, I mean, I don't agree with what they're doing down here. I think the death of George Floyd is horrific. And hopefully, as with that arrest and the charging today, that justice can be served. But, uh, you know, for the most part, people, people were standing around. And the last I checked, you could stand around at Civic Center Park. I personally wouldn't on a Friday night at the end of May, but to take rounds from officers in the dark, uh, I think was just uh, was just not right. And nor do I condone anybody throwing anything at the office. I just, Randy, I, I just feel like at this point, uh, it's as if you know they've they, they've moved. The, this crowd has gone somewhere. Where, I don't know, but the police helicopter's up up and above. But uh, could it have been worse down here? Absolutely. Uh, at the end of the day, will they give themselves an evaluating? Will they, they give themselves a better grade than maybe you or me would? Um, maybe. But... You know, I, I think I back. Do. I think back, Stefan, to the ICE rallies and the way the police in Aurora, the, the line officers, the, the folks who are there to enforce the law and they weren't allowed to they were held back they were kept inside that ice facility when those flags came down and people breached the uh the security line and all of that and and it just it just feels like that's what's happening again most cops would be more than happy to enforce the law disperse this nightmare and make sure that everybody goes home and and goes home safe uh, once the law breaking breaks out but uh but this is this is permitting this to go on and on and putting more and more lives at risk it's ridiculous yeah uh randy as i as i hear you i agree with you my friend and uh where did that crowd go this crowd has gone south and uh just a large flashbang as i walk now down broadway and for those of you watching, uh, can I have a little levity for a moment, Randy? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I sure as hell I'm, I'm sure as hell glad I got this pink mask. <laughs> hey, you, you stand out well. <laughs> I just wonder if that won't keep the tear gas out. How will it do with the COVID? Uh, this is uh, neither COVID nor <laughs> tear gas proof, my friend. Uh, but we're walking south, and there was a huge... Uh, you know, concussion grenade down here, and exactly what this guy said. Where are they going to go? So everybody's going where there's the shops huge, are. There's a huge explosion again, and when I say explosion, please know what I mean by that. But that's what it sounds like. Uh, these are crowd dispersing mechanisms used by law enforcement. And uh, once I get up to this intersection, uh, I'll turn the uh, turn the camera around so it literally seems um, like they are forcing everybody to get out of the downtown area the civic center park area and move south on broadway that they're intentionally driving them down to those businesses yeah i i mean uh is the goal to get them into cherry creek i don't know uh it it may be randy it, it, it may very well be part of a plan and of course they don't owe us anything to tell us uh they certainly wouldn't. Um, but now here at the intersection, I'm going to turn the camera around for those of you online. And I am trying. If you want to see what Stefan sees, go to 710knus.com. He is broadcasting live as he walks down Broadway with the crowd of protesters that are being evacuated from the park. There we go. Finally, the... Uh, this is the intersection of Broadway and 13th. Um, this is where they went, Randy. You can see that on your screen. Uh, 
and I can guarantee you this is right, absolutely right for a concussion crowd dispersing grenade right here as the traffic is as if uh, a Rockies game has just gotten out in Moldova. Yeah, it, it's crazy. I mean, this is it, traffic has been so dead for the last three months, and today, all day long, even when I came downtown for the petitions and drove through the uh, the protest that was going on at noon and one o'clock, traffic was crazy. This is like a normal Friday night, but the police are letting them drive. And look, boy, now we can see a little little behind you on the video. So now we can see all the people standing in the street. You guys waving a flag here, standing on the on the hood of a, a, a car. It looks to be down here from either tire rubber rising. Uh, I would assume that's what it is because there are people running away. And the chant is no peace, no peace, as though somehow this kind of disruption in a city that had nothing to do with what happened in Minneapolis uh, with a, a perpetrator who's been arrested and uh, is in custody and has been charged with third degree murder, that this is going to somehow fix something or make something better. And the police are just letting it go on. Now they're down by that library and the Supreme Court building. There's all kinds of damage that can be done. Where are the cops right now, Stefan? Uh, I have not seen a police officer anywhere near here. Um, this is the Supreme Court building. Um, this building right here was just being given a new fresh coat of uh, spray paint tagging. Uh, several people with spray paint cans. And... Uh, Absolutely zero law enforcement presence. This is nonsensical. These people would not have wandered down to the library and the Supreme Court building with paint cans had they not been pushed out of Civic Center Park, where at least they were all in one place. That is absolutely correct. For those of you watching online, this is the intersection of, I believe I said... 13th, 13th, yep. 13th and Broadway. You've got just for geographic reference for those of you online, the Denver Art Museum is right here in our picture. So it sounds like we have some, it looks like some ambulances are trying to get through here. Um, and again, there if there is a police presence, you would never know it because there is no public address um, speakers, bullhorns, none of that, Randy, is being used. And I, I can just go by my own experience uh, that that in, in times of civil unrest and situations where I've covered, um, you see that. Uh, you've got a lot of people just, in essence, blocking Broadway right now. And uh, I just want to be smart because uh, they may not know it, but I know what's coming. And uh, you've got a guy right here. Uh, here come the police, I believe, uh, coming in. I'm not sure, to be quite honest with you. I don't know if what we're seeing. Uh, they're Denver police officers. I don't know if, Randy, they're trying to surround them. There's a man here with an aluminum baseball bat. Uh, oh, boy. The first, time, the first time I've seen that, and I'll try to be as discreet. But this is just unbelievable that this is 2020. You can see him online swinging his baseball bat. It's like they're creating chaos instead of ending it. Um, I can't tell you exactly what we said, Randy, half an hour ago during our coverage that yeah, there's something, I don't know if that was a pepper ball that was shot, um, but Randy, we said on the air probably 90 minutes ago for the first time, you know, 
they were letting everything happen. And then what, what was the plan? And there, there, I have not seen one police officer. I see an ambulance. So are, are the protesters letting the ambulances go by? They're at least not interfering with that, it sounds like. Well, I don't, I don't, uh, yeah, the ambulance just got through the intersection of 13th and Broadway, but I did see it. I did see it back uh, and waiting with its lights flashing for what seemed to me to be at least, I don't know, three, four minutes. Uh, the ambulance did get through. But uh, you can see there's some motorcycles that are staging here. Um, motorcycle protesters or motorcycle police officers? No, motorcycle protesters. And we got to watch out. We've got mopeds out here. And people standing, for those of you watching online, you can see people standing in the middle of Broadway uh, holding signs, many of those scooters. Didn't, Randy Corcoran, you're an attorney. Didn't they outlaw those damn scooters? <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, they're, brother, they're everywhere. Yeah. They're everywhere. Wish they would. Um, I, I, if I may, and I'll throw it back to you and... and uh, uh, you know, I feel like I'm in a very safe location right now. Um, you know, we we hear a lot about the summer of violence in Denver. Uh, that was right before I got here. Uh, you have the mayor, uh, who was it, Randy? Help me out. The mayor that uh, was uh, was basically voted out of office because of his uh, litter. No, because of his uh, response to the uh, the massive blizzard. Oh, so, uh, yeah. Pena. Pena. Frederico Pena. Yeah, I don't know who it was, but... It was uh, Pena. Frederic I think it was even... Yeah, so regardless, I, what I'm trying to say is this is... Uh, this is a hell of a way to happen in your final term before you're term limited as Denver mayor. But this... Right here, just, I mean, look, you and I are like elephants, right? We're going to have long memories. Um, what I've seen here tonight, I don't think reflects the values of Denver. I know that. I don't, I, and I know that it doesn't reflect the values of 99.9% .9 of Coloradans. I understand why they're out here. Uh, I guess in general, they think they're protesting police, the police death. And, and you know, I, I, I can't argue with, with, with that because I haven't talked to anyone and I'm not going to. But from what I have seen from my perspective, and as I've tried to be your eyes and ears, there seems to be, and Randy, I know, I think we're lockstep in this. This seems to, as it has unfolded on live on the radio and our, our Internet coverage, um, I think it's, it's very evident to everyone that this could have, at least if anything, been done a little bit differently if not this was a flat out failure you and i have been talking now for 20 some minutes since you headed down toward 13th and broadway not a single effort at law enforcement that we can see no uh, there no one no one there's no presence and and these protesters no. are just they're just revving up they're just waiting for the police to come through there, it seems like now. I gotta tell you, you know, you give me that time frame. It's hard for me, kind of in this situation, to have a real sense of, of time. And if it's been that long, you know, um, I, I have not seen one officer. Yeah. Uh, well, it's coming up uh, on 9:30. Right. We got back at about 9:06, so it's uh, it's a long stretch with no law enforcement. While the streets are being taken over, and cars can't get through, and ambulances can't get through, and and buildings are being tagged, it's it, it, it's really it is jaw dropping. Uh, I will say this: if I can say one positive, at least right now, I have not seen any true vandalism when it comes to busting windows, uh, anything like that, physical damage, besides the the tagging and many, many, many of the buildings down here have, have spray paint. And
Somebody's happy. I think they're happy because there's no police presence. I, I mean, know. these are the motorcycles. Oh. I mean, these motorcycles are going down Broadway. Randy, it truly really is, uh, it's like a free-for-all. Uh, the protesters have to be wondering, where are the police? What, you know, are the police thinking, well, we'll just, we'll just let them get bored and go home? Like yeah, that texter you, said before? Yeah, I, well, nobody's getting bored. And if they're bored, they're not going home. I can't tell you that right now I've got a Denver police helicopter, I believe, a Denver police helicopter light. Let's see if I can get it in the uh, See that on one. That was the. That was what I presume to be a law enforcement helicopter with a light on this intersection. And uh, I hope you can still hear me because it's yeah, so it's, loud. It's gotten hard. It's gotten hard to hear you. People can watch live at 710knus.com and you can hear there as well if you're listening to our radio broadcast and you want to see what Stefan is seeing, go to 710knus.com right now. And yeah, oh yeah, there's the helicopter, and uh, now it sounds like something's shooting. What's that? No, I haven't heard any. Can you still hear me, Randy? Yes. Yeah, I, I haven't heard anything like that. It's probably the noise of the motorcycle okay. coming coming through. Um, but what I was saying earlier, and I can't, uh, I, I don't know if, I, if you heard me, but uh, the police helicopter or some seemingly law enforcement helicopter was up, and uh, this whole intersection of 13th and Broadway was lit up. And uh, to me, I put two and two together. And uh, they got eyes in the sky. And uh, to me, this would be the next intersection to disperse the crowd. Uh We've got firecrackers going off. There's a firecracker right there. I mean, it's just, again, I can't say how this just seems to be. Uh, just a free for all. It, it seems like you've gotten more muffled. Has your mask shifted or anything different on your end? This is the livest of live radio with Stephen Tubbs downtown at 13th and Broadway as the as the mob has moved south on Broadway from Civic Center Park. You can see it all live at 710knus.com. And, and we're just, we just know that something's going to happen. The cops have to be coming if that helicopter was up kind of scoping out things. What, what's, I can't quite tell what, it looks like the crowd is still moving, Stefan. Where are they going now? Yeah, Randy, I'm glad you asked. Uh, now the crowd is definitely heading south on Broadway. And, and frankly, because I'm a one-man band down here, I don't know if this is the only crowd, uh, quite frankly. Uh, but they are now moving uh, on Moss down South Broadway, and of course, you know, I just want to point out the obvious that there are a lot more businesses down that way. And, um, yes, you know, this it's. Intersection now, I had a family member with a store down there, and thank God when they screwed up all the the road lanes, put in those stupid bike areas, and made it so you couldn't park down there. Um, she moved her store to Lipton. Uh, where it's been doing quite well, thank you very much. But she she would be at risk. All these business owners are. But it sounds like so far, no actual vandalism other than the, some spray painting on buildings and statues. Yeah, you're exactly right. Um, I saw no I saw no signs of any kind of vandalism. You can see again what I mean for those of you online. Uh, as long as we've got this Steve Jobs battery that'll last. Uh, you can see all of the traffic and uh you know who knows i don't know if these are people that came down and they were protesting and now they're going away um definitely calm over here uh but again you know what we just saw randy at the intersection of 13th and broadway uh that crowd has now moved south and uh, uh it's it's just it's gridlock it, it really the, truly is the I mean, line of cars yeah, like, is extraordinary yeah. it, it does look like uh, a rockies or a bronco game just got out absolutely i mean i don't know you know how far back this goes uh 
And, you know, another thing I'll just point out, this is strictly my observation and not anything based on more than what I saw, but you notice, Randy, that everybody, the crowd was dispersed to the south. Um, obviously, you know, a lot of storefront businesses in literally in downtown as well. But they moved everybody out of Civic Center Park off the West Lawn and the West Steps of the Capitol. As I walked back, for those of you watching online, more toward the Capitol. But it may explain why Colfax was that kind of, you know, the line of demarcation, I guess, to not let them cross and go into downtown. Yeah. But again, you've got a crowd. I mean, I, I, you, you I could... would say easily more than a thousand. And now, yeah, sure. You know, and, and for those of you online, I think you can maybe see the Capitol right here. Um, well, yeah, Randy, they're not here anymore, but they all just didn't get in their cars and go home. They're now walking down Broadway in the middle of Broadway. As you know, the whippersnappers down there, or, or maybe you don't know that, but he's at 13th and Lincoln. He just texted me, uh, your producer, executive producer, Adam Walker, that there's a big line of riot police at 13th and Lincoln. So you may want to uh, wander up that way a little bit. 13th and Lincoln. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so they've cleared out, Randy, and I'll, I'll make my way over there. All right. Uh, but the, but the, real, the real sense I get is, Push the crowd south. Get them, get them out of the, uh, get them out of the capital. 